Wow, what a day yesterday, what an evening last night. I have such tremendous energy. The universe is just sending me so much awesome energy that I'm converting and using and it's just getting my wheels turning and it's awesome because, you know, when you have a very healthy body, the energy that gets sent your way, you can convert it. It's like, it's like feeding, okay? And kids need to be fed energy because the absence of energy from any child is atrophy, okay? So humans need energy, whatever it is. And that's why some people who have really messed up imbalances in their hormones they feed off the negative energy and then people who are really healthy can convert both negative and positive energy but still keep a balance of what they let within their immediate circle so i really thrive off all the different types of energy and it's great i mean once you get to a point where you're healed and sealed the energy that gets thrown your way, you'll be able to convert it and it'll just make you more creative as well as have you understand the bigger picture and what you're dealing with, with when it comes to the world as well as if you're in a job, what your, you know, your competition is doing too. Okay. So, so yeah, I was um, posting about that autism testimony, just freak the people out, like freak them out. And it, they should, it should. We're entering into 2020. I mean, back in 2012, the Olympics, the, um, the Winter Olympic opening ceremonies was talking about in an indirect way about hospitals. And there's gonna be a virus, that's, viruses are gonna be out, okay? Because you remember in the 90s, they were talking about the Ebola virus and they're seeing, they're predicting and they're knowing that eventually it's going to come to the West. It's already found in Africa. They already knew it. They had to get into the public consciousness by putting out a movie called Outbreak with Morgan Freeman and Renee, whatever, whatever her name is. And that other guy, um, I have his face in my mind, but I don't remember his name. He played in Tootsie. Anyway, so they got into your public conscious. They got into your mind. They, they, they're they showing you. It's like almost like predictive programming. They're already predicting what's going to happen in the future. So there's already these indicators that are letting us know things are going to be happening in the future, and you got to get prepared, okay? So and then that's when I was discovering um, stuff about the Illuminati and the conspiracy world, and I went through. Have you ever heard of this, where the truth passes through three stages? First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. Well, believe me, if it wasn't some kind of truth that penetrates your belief system, you wouldn't react, okay? It would just be like, oh, okay, nice person. She's kind of weird, but, uh, you know, just like, you know, with your child says, hey, I saw a ghost and whatever, or I talked to a big tall man and... He was talking to me. You know how kids like make up stories and sometimes they actually are true, but parents don't know and they don't want to create any kind of animosity with their child. And, and so they, they just, you know, they're like, okay, that's my kid's truth. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to squash their truth. So I'll just ignore it, you know, and until then the mother then sees a ghost herself. And then the child is still saying that he sees a ghost and experiences stuff. And then she gets all mad. And when you get mad, when you're experiencing and you're ridiculing, you're experiencing violent like reactions. It means that whatever truth is out there is penetrating your belief system. Because when I was listening to the Illuminati, I went through a whole ridicule. I went through a, oh my God, like, like I was just so upset. I was so upset. Not that it was like, I thought it was true, but maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I still don't know to this day how much of that Illuminati stuff is true. Okay, but it doesn't even matter. But it was still somebody else's truth that I knew was challenging my belief system. And it really made me sad. It made me upset. It was like a death in the family type of thing. And that's kind of with this whole autism post that I, you know, this the the I knew at some point there was going to be a testimony that someone's going to come out and say, okay, this is what my kid is experiencing. This is what I'm experiencing. I can't not not share it. I have to. 
And because we got to give somebody hope that they can get their kid back or that they can have the child that is now completely well balanced. And hope isn't a bad thing, especially when it has to do with something that isn't poisonous. Now, putting hope in something that's poisonous that has been, you know, labeled as antibiotic and and illegal. Well, yeah, you don't put hope in things like that. But putting hope in something like cabbage water and pink Himalayan salt that's fermented, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'll tell you what, I'll, even just merely suggesting that autism can be reversed is like a blasphemous thing. It's almost like people don't want people to reverse autism. That's the only thing I can come from it. And so what autism is, is when you have a conglomeration of elements that stagnate the cognitive ability and the speech ability of a child through its growth process. That's what autism is. It is basically a stagnation in the growth process based upon so many different factors, weaknesses in the body already exposed to viruses, okay? And then the child then regresses. And it was known way back in, in the 90s, I worked with somebody who worked with somebody that was trying to figure out what kind of therapies to hopefully bring the child back. But it's not something you can do a therapy with. Okay, yeah, you could maybe do some CBD oil and maybe stagnate some of the of the uh, anomalies and stop it from reproducing, but it's still, it's very short term because the programming has already been embedded until you can actually change the programming in the body, not stop it or stagnate it, which is what people are doing right now when they're reacting to the Ebola right now, because we hear about Ebola, they've already done test runs as far as bringing patients into hospitals in New York City. Actually, just within this month, they've been doing training drills because I know people are coming from different parts of Africa, coming into the West, and they know eventually they're going to have to quarantine people. So everyone now, like in these different chemtrails groups that I belong to, they're all trying to figure out how to stop the Ebola virus. Well, they're like, oh yeah, colloidal silver and antibiotics and you know natural antibiotics. And I'm like, oh my God, no, that doesn't kill the virus. Okay, it doesn't kill the virus. It just it just stops the cells from reproducing that have the virus but then you're also stopping the new cell growth. So essentially you're weakening the body because new cell growth is more of an army against the things that are bad. So when you're stagnating good cell growth as well as bad cell growth, you're still weakening the body, leaving it open for a virus to come in and ravage it. And that's kind of like what they're doing with the CBD oil in kids with autism. Oh yeah, I reversed my kid's autism with CBD oil. No, you just further weaken their body. Maybe you manage the symptom here, but you haven't gotten to the root cause. Okay? Just hold on a second. So last night, I got a lot of interesting people reacting, like, like ridiculing, reacting, which reminded me when I first rolled out J-Juice and everyone's all flipping out. But now I'm a bit more seasoned and I understand where it comes from. It, it's like you're introducing a new thought process that just, oh my God, it really just penetrated their belief system. It, it threw them for a loop. And that's okay because you're going to have to introduce something that's going to, that's going to challenge your belief system. And it's got to be just like with Dr. Phil. I mean, he kind of like popped the cherry in that. Okay. Because, yes, people are bringing up Dr. Phil again, which is fine. But Dr. Phil has also done a disservice to his audience because when you are demonizing something as, as important as minerals and electrolytes, you're now giving people no option, no third option to survive heart attacks and strokes, as well as potentially reverse autism and any other type of childhood illness. Okay? Children are... Children, I mean, yeah, they're the future, but children need to have all of the elements that build up every single part of their body. And when you keep stagnating their growth process because you keep battling a disease that you don't even see, it's becoming, it's going to become more of a, it's going to become worse later on. You're going to compound the issues. And so right now we're seeing with the whole thing with the Ebola. Let me read this thing. Well, I don't know if I, oh, I could read it. But um, they just did a whole test run. It was a drill. 
that um, because they know it's it's going to eventually be here. I mean, I've been telling you guys this. You guys know this as well. But let me find that. It's like a short little article. And it's from the New York, New York City. Emergency exercise to transport Ebola patients, New York City Health. Okay? That's why you're not doing, you shouldn't be doing antibiotics. I don't care if it's in the garden or if it's in the lab. New York City and New Jersey Health Department conduct emergency exercise to safely transport a simulated Ebola patient to New York City Health Hospitals slash Bellevue. The current outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of Congo is the second largest outbreak in history with over 1,100 confirmed cases and 700 deaths. Federal funding for Ebola preparedness set to expire in 2020. Wow. So federal or uh, fire department New York has tacked, stacked, prepared the patient for transfer. So this is a simulated thing to Gurney as New York City plus hospitals, Bellevue staff stand by. April 30th, 2019. So this is written in April 30th. In order to prepare for viral outbreaks occurring in other parts of the world, New York City and state partnered with first responders in New Jersey to conduct an emergency exercise last week to transport a person pretending to be an Ebola patient to New York City Health plus hospitals, Bellevue. Agencies that participated in the drill included the Health Department, New York City Health plus hospitals, the Fire Department of the City of New York, New York State Department of Health, the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, and the Health and Law Enforcement Agencies from New Jersey. The exercise entailed the transfer of a person pretending to be an Ebola patient from Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Jersey to the Regional Ebola and Other Special Pathogen Treatment Center at New York City Health and Hospitals, Bellevue in New York City. Given the current outbreak of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is the second largest Ebola his outbreak in history with over 1,100 confirmed cases and 700 deaths, it is critical that the healthcare system is prepared to handle an actual case of Ebola or other infectious diseases threat. Despite this critical need for readiness, federal funding for Ebola preparedness is set to expire in 2020, placing the future of these emergency response capabilities in jeopardy. Which means, you guys, you're, it's every man for himself at this point. This exercise, the first of its kind between New York City and New Jersey, tested the healthcare system ability to safely move a patient to a clinical setting where Ebola can be effectively treated. In particular, the exercise assessed the ability of participants to coordinate patient transportation to New York City Health hospitals, safely use biocontainment devices and personal protective equipment while caring for the patient and appropriately decontaminate and dispose of equipment after transportation. Okay, so, I mean, it's this is on my business page and this is on my wall. You can Google www.1newyorkcity.gov, okay? And it's called New York City and New Jersey Health Department of Conduct Emergency Exercise to Safely Transport a Simulated Ebola Patient to New York City Health Hospitals in Bellevue. Okay, so what everyone's trying to do now is apply so much antibiotics, whether it's natural or synthetic, they're trying to find colloidal silver, they're trying to find all these different minerals to go and try to kill the virus. There is nothing, tree bark, nothing can kill a virus, you guys, okay? You know what cancer is? Cancer is viruses that then detect a weak body and they start recycling you back into the universe. It's systematic degradation from there. And then what the medical holistic industry does is tries to stop the programming, stop the reproduction of those cancer cells. But also while you're doing that, you're stopping the good cells from reproducing to help fight and combat that, um, that disease. Because that's why you have inflammation. That's why you have white blood cells. That's why you have swelling. That's why you have symptoms. Because it's the body trying to, to rectify the situation, but you're not giving it what it needs. And so if you don't have enough minerals on reserve, then that's when vital organs start shutting down. Okay? And so this is, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm just the messenger. I'm saying, hey, you don't really have a choice nowadays when you're when your body and your kid's body, especially with autism, this is where this is the biggest thing with autism. When somebody has autism, they already have a weakened immune system, a weakened body. Okay. So right now we're saying, okay, we have 
disability and then different ability, but at some point it's going to be lack of ability. And people that are diagnosed have a shelf life. So that's great that we have specialized programs for people to cater to their disabilities, but it also means you have a shelf life and that also means that when there is some aggressive virus like Ebola going through a community and you already been diagnosed, so you already been proven that you have a weakness that you're managing, there's no telling. Then let's say, let's, let's say you do get the vaccine. Great, fine. If they already have an approved vaccine from Merck, then you'll get the vaccine, but you have no idea what components in that vaccine is going to trigger because you don't know exactly what your predisposition is. You have an idea, but every single time you've been exposed to a virus, a, a conglomeration of viruses, and you have weaknesses. Now, though the Ebola vaccine has a common virus that has a glycoprotein or glycopeptide inhibitor, which is very much emulates the Ebola virus, bloodborne pathogen. Okay, that's what's in the vaccine. But there's others, there's other adjuvants in there that some people who already have imbalances are going to have adverse reactions no matter what. But wouldn't you rather have an adverse reaction and some other exotic disease from the vaccine than die from Ebola? That's the that's basically the dice that you're rolling if you don't do something like jelly juice. Seriously, it's it now has come down to it. And I it, it almost seems kind of weird that it's coming down to where jelly juice is the only thing. But that's kind of what it is because everyone now has so many issues. They're rolling the dice every single time they go outside. I mean, when a 34-year-old dies from pneumonia, and for all intents and purposes, he looks like he's a healthy dude. But I'm telling you, just because you look healthy doesn't mean you are, okay? He had a bout with pneumonia, probably prematurely went out and covered the games out there in the cold air, and it further weakened him, and he didn't have enough strength in his body to fight it, and he passed away. That's kind of what we're dealing with. So when you have kids with autism, and the parents are throwing all of these antibiotics and all these natural remedies at them, and then they're afraid of this Ebola virus, not doing the vaccine, because now you have the anti-vaxxers just going like, holy crap. You know what? Now you guys are doing diligence. You have to watch this. You can't, you, there's nothing else you can do. We have done enough to get this out there. But Dr. Phil was a, uh, a roadblock. Not really, but he was. Because he definitely put the fear of cabbage and water and salt in the minds of many people who actually need it. We have people who actively are working against this information because they don't have, they penetrate their belief system and they don't want to believe that something as easy as cabbage, water, and salt and that's fermented could do such wondrous things. I even have mentions from Harvard molecular biologists that are dealing with inflammation mentioning me in their academic articles because I get these emails every so often from academia.whatever where Jay Epperly was mentioned by Charles Surhan. And I'm looking at who Charles Surhan is and he's some like, you know, uh, well-known uh, inflammation specialist, pain specialist at Harvard University. Okay, so there's nobody in the medical world and the holistic world that's gonna touch this information because they're all about pain mitigation. They're all about messing with your body to try to stop the programming. But remember, everything is connected. Nothing lives in a vacuum. Nothing does. Everything is connected. So when you do the J juice and you're drinking it, it's going to heal not only the whatever you're drinking the J juice for, but everything else that you have issues with and you're gonna to have to deal with it. And so when we have this Ebola virus scare, come into our midst and people are going to say, no, I'm not doing the vaccine or they make it mandatory or they make it voluntary. There are people that are going to be doing <laughs> antibiotic types of rituals every single day and it's going to, and everything is connected. So not only are they going to further weaken the major weaknesses, the predispositions they already carry, but they're, it's going to spread. Weakness spreads, strength spreads and weakness spreads. That's why I don't allow anyone to be anti-vax on my page. I don't want any conspiracy or anyone completely just emoting their emotions where it's just so visceral, their reactions, because it's infectious. Weakness is infectious and so is strength. I would rather project strength and hope onto the world than hopelessness 
and imbalances in the body, mind, and spirit. And I see the imbalances all the time. And I believe me, I do unfollow a lot of you guys because you still exhibit those characteristics of major imbalances that I don't subscribe to anymore. The only reason why I belong to some of these groups, I want to see kind of what people are doing still, what the, I'm, I'm kind of testing the waters and seeing how much I get my information out without getting totally attacked. I do get attacked on my own page as far as my business page, but that's okay. It's to be expected. Especially when I mention something like autism that is so prevalent and is so controversial. But we have to give these parents who have lost their kids to this disease some kind of hope. And if you are actively squashing hope in parents that are just at their wit's end, some parents don't care. Some parents are okay with the fact that their kids are have this disease and they're working with it and that's fine. More power to them. But there are some parents that don't accept it, don't want to have that for their child. They want, they see more for their child. And they know there's nothing poisonous about J-Juice, you know, and they know it's going to be a battle. And so we want to give those parents, and that's what I'm doing, I'm reaching those people that do give a shit about the future for their children and for Earth and for whatever, for humanity. The ones that don't, doesn't even matter. They're not going to do the J-Juice anyways, and they'll never give it to their kid, and they'll never get, and, and they, they've they already squashed hope in their own family, and so what's the difference of squashing hope in some stranger, right? So I don't speak to those people. I just keep them at a distance. But the ones that I want to reach are the ones that actually do care about themselves and about their kids and the future of humankind, mankind. Because we don't have to die. We don't. That's my whole premise on this is we don't have to pass away. But people are because they have lost hope. They don't have enough strength to battle. There's too many temptations out there. There's so many temptations out there. When it comes to traveling, when it comes to food, which is fine, when it comes to extra cooker activities, when it comes to traveling, when it comes to conspiracy and activism, and it's so much more fun to play in those circles than it is to actually sit home and face your predispositions. It's more fun to go to a bar and drink all your alcohol and eat so much food that already, you know, that you already have imbalances that you're not even paying attention to. It's more fun to go into these groups and bash someone or something or some mineral or play with the conspiracy world or bash the government. It's more fun to do that than to actually sit at home, shut the hell up and heal yourself and your family. It's more fun to be like, oh yeah, 9-11 was an inside job and it could have been, but it could not have been. But it's more fun to pay attention to that than it is to really take care of what really truly is important, which is you. Because without you, how can you help the future? Okay, how can you? If you can't even help yourself, how the hell are you going to help your kids and, and everyone around you? So it, this is really interesting. 2020 is coming up. And, you know, back in 2012, when I was in the conspiracy world and the whole, you know, the, the, the opening ceremonies of the 2012 Olympics, the Winter Games, was kind of like the predictive programming, right? As if something like they're trying to tell us that they're doing this. They're not doing it. They're just letting us know that this is what's going to happen in the future. They already see indicators. You know why people are rich out there? Why billionaires are billionaires? Because they pay attention to indicators and they have the right connections. Why is it that we're not rich like they are? Because we keep recycling the same BS over and over again and no one's adding new blood into your homogenous family. And so you keep repeating history. So you're never going to break out of your your whatever, the limitations, financial limitations, physical limitations, you know, um, occupational limitation, limitations. But those that pay attention to indicators are extremely wealthy, whether it's body, mind, or spirit, or actual minerals like in the money. Those that ignore indicators will continue to make the same mistakes and they will pass it along to their kids who will continue to make the same mistakes. And then they get pissed off and say, oh, yeah, they're so bad because they're rich or they're so bad because they're this. And they start blaming and they start, you know, and it, it becomes just horrible. So that's who I speak to are those people 
that want to that are paying attention to indicators and are doing something about it and they promote j juice because let me tell you i don't say jelly juice all the time i say without triggering people i say cabbage water and salt i went to that chemtrails group and they were talking about you know the whole thing with ebola and applying the the colloid of silver and all that stuff i'm like you know what you guys there's nothing that kills a virus nothing kills viruses just so you know but you know what drink a lot of cabbage juice drink some a bunch of sauerkraut juice with a lot of salt sauerkraut juice a lot of salt you got to feel pain and that's pretty much what i say and then someone comes in there one of my own people <laughs> come in they're like oh well there's stuff that they're antivirals and then but i'm drinking j juice and i'm like okay now i gotta speak to j juice because he just brought up j juice but there is nothing that kills viruses now it comes down to you strengthening your body it comes down to you strengthening every single aspect of your body because let me tell you these viruses do not discriminate and especially if you've been diagnosed with autism or anything else you already have a weakness that these viruses are going to go just like the angel of death and if you don't have a strong enough body to handle the symptoms of ebola and you're too afraid to get the vaccine yeah now you're rolling the dice and most likely the weak people are not going to survive a major pandemic because i'm just epidemic now epidemic is for a more localized pandemic is where it breaks outside the local area and now like they're already doing because the federal funding in 2020 is going to end with the ebola stuff so now it's up to the states to get their stuff and i don't know what my state's doing as far as somebody coming in <laughs> with ebola <laughs> if new york city and new jersey are doing you know drills test drills to see how they would take care and quarantine a person with ebola what would happen if someone came into cleveland hopkins airport and they came from Africa or from some safari because they want to go and be a global tourist. What do we have in place? Okay, when when two states out of the union is doing these Ebola drills, it kind of makes you concerned, right? What are, What is your state doing to figure out how to quarantine some of these viruses that are making its way to your doorstep? So now you can't rely on the government to be able to contain these things. Okay, now you have to rely on yourself. Remember, the medical system isn't there to keep you healthy. We already know that. We've already established that. Now it's about how do you manage your cancer disease and chronic illness and heal at the same time. Try to have some semblance of normalcy in your world, whatever that is, and heal. Okay? So it's going to be interesting to watch all of this. I know I'm protected. I kind of feel bad for my husband, but I think once he sees that there is a scare and he's watching my videos, I don't know, man, maybe he will drink more of my juice. I can only hope because he's out there on the road. But he comes home and he brings everything he's out there. Or he comes home and brings it home to me. And I mean, I'm, I can handle it. My dog and I are fine. My dog is very healthy. Okay. I'm really healthy. My husband is relatively healthy compared to the general population. Okay, but he's not escaping the aging process, which is a sign that the body is still in reserves to keep the vital organs going. Okay, so, but when you have an aggressive virus like Ebola, and then people applying the wrong chemistry to the body, you're only going to compound the issue. So now it's up to you guys to not rely on the government to protect you. Because some of you say, oh, I'm anti-government. Okay, fine. You need government in certain instances. And other times you need to now learn how to protect yourself because I'm telling you, yeah, they'll give you the vaccine, but you don't know how you're going to react. You don't know what pre, and especially if you're not doing the J-juice. So you have no idea of what predispositions you're going to be triggering. Okay, that's the whole point of the anti-vax is that they have predispositions that are going to be triggered no matter what if they encounter that virus, that same virus that's stronger in their environment. But the fact that we have biotech to kind of preemptively introduce you to that new environment on a more of an attenuated level, superficial level, they're giving you now a, a, a transition process. But if you are some completely anti-vax and you're not, and you're anti-J juice, you're screwed. <laughs> you are seriously screwed. 
So it's better to be pro-vax, okay, better be pro-vax, anti-J juice, and just get the vaccine and deal with the exotic diseases, or be anti-vax and pro-jilly juice and give yourself a leg up, but you're going to have to then go through the healing process. But if they make it mandatory, then you do both, and it's not going to hurt you. The vaccine won't, I mean, the vaccine may trigger predisposition, but no matter what, that's healing, so you're going to be drinking J juice, that's fine. It's no big deal. You're going to have to deal with your predispositions and your weaknesses at some point. You can't escape it. Some of you want to escape it. Think that, you know, suppressing it and, and taking all your drugs is going to make things better or being an activist and whatever politics you're doing is going to make it better. No, the world's going to keep going. The world's not going to wait for you to get your shit together. Okay. So it's like, you, you got to learn how to keep up. Some of you have fallen off the protocol because it's, it's too difficult. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah, it's it's not easy. I wish I could just add a bunch of sugar to the J juice and make it so easy for you, but that would totally completely, you know, it would miss the point if you add so much sugar to J juice. Now, some people have mixed the J juice with fruit juice, which I don't love, but it's but you need to have the you need to have the waterfalls, and you need to not be triggering so much of that acid imbalances with the sugar stuff, but. Do what you have to do to get it down in you. Do what you got to do. I know it's not easy, but don't cut down on the salt. That's the last thing you guys should do is mess with the actual recipe. Because I'll tell you, you know, any chemist out there, any chemist knows that salt is a major needed component in the human body. It's what they use in these IV bags when they stabilize the patient who's been dehydrated. So any chemist knows. The ones that are against the salt are people who have listened to their doctors because they have predispositions like hypertension and they don't want to activate or energize their anomalies because remember, the doctors are all about mitigating pain. So a doctor is not going to be like, oh yeah, salt's great when they know their patient has hypertension because the patient expects to not have any symptoms. Okay? So, you know... Um, so you're not going to hear too much about how salt is so wonderful from doctors when they have patients who have so many cardiovascular issues and that don't want to feel any pain or any symptoms or anything. They want to be drugged out. But an actual chemist in a lab that does, that understands the periodic tables and biodiversity and biochemistry, they will never demonize salt. But people who do are the ones that have the most issues that need it the most. That's kind of the irony of all of this, the paradox. John Oak said, it's hard to know. It's hard. It is hard. I'm not going to lie, but it's, it's a fight. Oh, yeah. Even when I, you know, I drank, I have some in my, right now, that's actually really easy to drink. It was like, oh, my God, it was, I was surprised. So sometimes the juice is easy. Sometimes it's hard. It just depends on your biochemistry and what's going on. And in the beginning, it's not easy. And Khadija says, I chase my JJ down with strawberry or watermelon. Yeah, I mean, you, you do what you have to do to get it in you. Sometimes what I do is I drink water prior to me drinking my juice, and then I drink my juice, and then so I still have the memory of the water. So even though, yeah, I do taste the salty background, it's still cold to kind of override those senses. And so I get it down that way. Because let me tell you, I don't just drink it like it's like, you know, juice. Like, it's, oh, I don't enjoy drinking it. Believe me, I don't love it. But I know it's necessary. And when I know what it's done for me, that's what then keeps me drinking it and, and, and doing it because I know what it's doing for me. And I will never let myself go back to where I was three years ago. I will never. So I will always have the J juice somewhere. Always. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, at this point it's going to be, I mean, you're going to watch I mean, I'm seriously, you're going to watch everyone freak the hell out when, when, when Ebola does finally come stateside. And it did back, I think it did in 2014 or something like that. I think it was in Houston or something. It came and it went. But, um, but you know, you can't stop the deluge of people who are, I mean, we're helping refugees. We're a melting pot. Okay, that's what America is. I mean, we're, I know Trump and people are trying to stop you know, a lot of immigration, but it still doesn't matter. People, we have people who are tourists that go into parts of Africa 
They're UN peacekeepers. They're the Peace Corps. They're doctors without borders that go into these areas and they go and help them. And they pick up the, the virus, but they, they're asymptomatic. But eventually they will start aging. Okay? I, I'm not saying that they're going to shed that, but you don't know. We don't know really, truly, you know, how... Uh, there's no way to stop something that is that prevalent. A virus is virus. It get it jumps to people. It spreads, okay? You can contain... When people are weak is what makes it communicable. Strong people don't spread uh negative viruses okay strong people but when you look at like when you look like an animation of a person that's weak and they have viruses of course all of us have viruses but you start seeing parts of them just kind of like if i can do an animation where you see just a weak person shedding you know the weak parts of themselves and then the person behind them is catching it i mean i wish i could just do the animation and then you can see like like the person's like blue, right? And they're shedding and they're weak, they're coughing or doing whatever. And the person behind them is like pink. And then you start seeing them and you see where the blue is penetrating their own microbiome. And that's how viruses spread because somebody is communicable. A weak person is communicable and they are spreading. A strong person can contain it. But then people are like, oh, well, I'll just take my colloidal silver and suppress the symptoms. Well, then you're doing double, you know, what is it, friendly fire against yourself. You're weakening your body, trying to stop the reproduction of the, the, the virus to, to, to multiply. But then you're also suppressing your healing hormones to try to then combat and heal the weakness from that adaptation. Because every time you're exposed to a virus on a weak body, you're going through an adaptation. You're going through an evolution process. A de-evolution or an evolution depends upon... The, the strength or the weakness of your body. When your body is weak, you're going through a de-evolution. When your body's strong, you're going through an evolution. So I knew when I was exposed to this virus this last week, I was going through an evolutionary process. Not a de-evolution, but an evolutionary process. And that's the difference. No different than the Bible and the angel of death passing over the, the, the house with the lamb's blood. Those were all the Jews, the slaves of Egypt, that God said, if you do not release to, to fit the Pharaoh, if you do not release <laughs> these slaves from Egypt, we're going to take your firstborn. And so that's, that's basically what the virus is, like the angel of death. And if you're a marked person with weaknesses, you're not going to escape an aggressive virus. So now you have no choice but to strengthen your body or what people are doing is they're weakening their body with antibiotics. Okay. And so I'm just, that's why the whole thing with the JJ's protocol is we're not taking massive amounts of freaking holistic remedies. You're done with the holistic remedies. Those are done with. That's If you're going to do anything like that, then go back into the system and get something that is regulated that someone can watch you because I'm telling people are over, going overboard on colloidal silver. They're going overboard on turmeric and honey. They're going overboard on elderberry syrup further weakening their children's immune system and body that already has imbalances in our fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones, and minerals. So I can't, I can't, I can't speak loud enough. <laughs> I mean, so just watch. Everything that I am saying you guys are going to see come into fruition. You're going to come into fruition. You're going to watch your friends and family apply the wrong chemistry to their body, and then they're going to be so upset they're gonna go to the vaccine that's great and then they're gonna be like oh my god i got a reaction i got this i got that whatever because they already have predispositions so no matter what the government's not going to be right in anybody's eyes because people hold predispositions and you can't stop a deluge of viruses i feel for the government i'm trying to help them in a lot of ways soften the blow let people know you have freaking predispositions because you passed along those issues from family member to family member completely homogenous family that doesn't bring in new blood or does, but then now everyone is equally maladaptive because before you can put a weak person, a strong person together, and then they'd make a relatively strong kid, right? But now we have people who are weak people, weak people attracting each other, both equally maladaptive, now make it, creating a maladaptive child. And that is now the state of our society. Cycle back three or 400 years ago, we wouldn't really have this issue. But now, fast forward to today, we have this issue. We are all dealing with people who are equally maladaptive. 
So now we have something to do, do get to do something different. If not, then it's going to be predictable and you're seeing it. All right, I'm going to go do my thing, but drink the J juice, okay? Drink the J juice. Deal with the pain. Just slam it. Okay, do your waterfalls. Enjoy your life. All right, bye.